Hello. So um, today I'm going to talk about uh, regulation theory. Um, I don't know what you know about regulation theory, which is a quite French theory, um, an heterodox one. Um, and I'm the um, um, chief editor of the Re Revue de la Régulation, Capitalisme, Institution, Pouvoir, uh, Regulation Review, Capitalism, Institution, Power. Some, sometimes it's easy to translate. Um, and we're working about uh, the regulation of capitalism um, and to try to understand uh, how does um, uh, regulation or regulatories uh, have been uh, or are uh, produced. Uh, we try to uh, work in the long wave uh, perspective. Um, regulation theory um, used to be uh, essentially uh, macroeconomic uh, theories uh, about capitalism, varieties of capitalism. But um, during uh, our uh, Congress in, um, in Paris 7 in uh, uh, 2015, uh, uh, very difficult for me to say the, the number uh, in English. Uh, I, ex I apologize for my uh, English, uh, which is quite a French one. Um, but uh, um, during uh, our uh, congress, we, we try with uh, some um, colleagues um, who are working uh, uh, with me to uh, in the board of their um, regulation review to uh, to stress three issues um, for the regulation theory by those who have not found in it. So we are younger or more less older, I, as, as you want, uh, than the founder, because uh, regulation theory have been funded in uh, the 70s. Uh, regulation theory have been funded with uh, three backgrounds. Uh, one is uh, Marx and um, wage labor nexus. Uh, the other is uh, Keynes and the uncert uncertainty and um, uh, intervention of state. And the third, um, uh, school of thinking, um, school of thought is uh, the Ecole des Annales. I don't know if you know the Ecole des Annales. Uh, it's a history of long ways and history of capitalism uh, has be, it's have been uh, done by um, Fernand Brodel and uh, Ernest Labros and um, Lucien Febvre and, and so on. Um, so uh, Usually, um, regulation theory is uh, quite um, uh, macro, um, and I, I think in, in one hour I, I cannot uh, stress the three issues. I don't really know if I have to try the first one about um, uh, the, the first question, what is an historicicide economic theory means? Uh, but my topic today uh, should be stressed on the second point. On it's quite true. I will say nothing about the third one. Uh, only if you want to, to speak uh, very longer. Uh, the second point uh, is main uh, for today. And I think some of you have uh, read the paper about uh, mesoeconomics. Yeah. Uh, the English version, as you, you read, is quite poor because the translation, I think it's a bit bad, but uh, you, you, will, uh, you will say some word about that, uh, maybe. Um, so just, just some words about uh, the first point of uh, what an historicicide economic theory means. And um, just to say uh, that um, regulation theory uh, have quite similarity with other, um, other sorts. Um, uh, which can uh, be um, understood as uh, in historical institutionalism. So, <coughs> j'ai une heure. I've got an hour. Thank you. Um, the thesis. I will be uh, maybe more speeder uh, for the first uh, chapter. Um, the idea of this chapter to. Um, for you to understand 
uh, the, the role and the place of uh, regulation theory um, within um, uh, old uh, historical institutionalism. Um, so there is not direct an, uh, affiliation between regulation theory and um, historical institutionalism, but um, they face similar critics, similar difficulties with the mainstream. Um, uh, this theory provides a complementary and converging uh, answer to uh, some challenge, some big challenge to understand long waves, to understand uh, institutional change. We can say uh, there is three uh, main schools uh, which can be linked to uh, regulation theory. Uh, German historical school, smaller uh, and so on. Um, American old institutionalism and regulation theory. So three, two schools which are linked with uh, regulation theory. Aglieta, Boyer, Lipies, Coria are one of the founders. Maybe you know Coria. Um, which is not so older. Um, okay, so uh, they are uh, all these three uh, schools. Or, um, they are uh, situated theories. I think the, the word "situated theories" is uh, quite important. There is no one capitalism uh, or one theory. Not uh, uh, there is not one general theory uh, as uh, in for Marx or for uh, Keynes. Uh, for instance, but we try, a uh, regulation theory try to, um, to develop um, something we, call, we can call a theory or uh, approach. Some of the researchers, um, as uh, Bob <coughs> Jessop, uh, which is from uh, Lancaster University, do not say uh, regulation theory, but regulation approaches. Uh, to say approaches, um, because there is different approach of regulation theory, and um, this is not really uh, a general theory. Uh, some uh, researcher says it is some, something like a middle range theory, uh, which means that is not a general theory. We can explain all the capitalism in the, all the um, countries and all the, um, the period, but it's a general methodology. And um, I think if you uh, try to understand regulation theory as a, as a method or as a methodology, uh, you, have, you, you pass a big step uh, and it could be very useful for you during your master degree or your thesis to use some part of regulation theory uh, as a method to catch um, institutional transformation and to catch uh, how do uh, social compromise uh, build and um, to uh, understand the uh, evolution uh, and so on. I said, uh, oh, okay, I try to do, 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 do speeder, but um, it's not really evident um, uh, in English. Uh, so um, I, just w I, I will just read uh, the, the, the proposition in, uh, which uh, are read in, uh, uh, which are in blue. Uh, reality is an evolving process, the researcher as to investigate permanently to theorize it. Uh, it could be really evident for you um, uh, if you are heterodox, if you uh, read some sociology and so on, but to discuss with the mainstream uh, approach or mainstream uh, paradigm, uh, it's very important to, uh, to um, to have uh, in, uh, in mind uh, that uh, reality is an uh, evolving process, is an evolving process, and you have to, to catch those processes and to uh, produce some representation of, re of re reality. So you have to um, be um, uh, armed with, um, with methodology to, uh, to, to catch the, the fact, the still is fact. Um, uh, I try to. I will try to focus in the second second part. Um, observation relies on abstraction. We are not in a positive theory. We are not just positivist. We are not in the, some series we which says uh, we are going to see the reality and the reality is here. No, the reality is not here. If I open the window, I see the reality. What do I see? What do I saw? 
I don't know what do I want to see, what is my, um, my constriction, where I my framework on what regulation theory uh, says is you have to be um, aware with uh, some frameworks and we are, to, we, we are working on those frameworks to um, help you, to help the researcher to see the reality and to describe the reality. So uh, observation relies on abstraction. You have to be um, uh, uh, structured, your, your mind, our mind, have to be structured with some abstraction, with some framework to catch the reality, to see the reality. Okay, um, uh, third proposition, qualitative inquiry fuel, fuel theory. Um, there are a mix uh, of uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, uh, materials or methodology, but uh, the point is that you have to develop some qualitative analysis of the fact you are trying to uh, describe, to understand, and to um, put into perspectives. Um, for the first part, it could be a, a, bit, a bit quickly said, but uh, fourth uh, proposition, diversity ought to be placed at the very core of economic theory. We are not trying to build one theory to explain everything, uh, okay, we are not trying to, uh, to produce the general law of the general economic systems. Uh, I don't believe in uh, that sort of uh, uh, things, game, uh, mistake, uh, <laughs> utopia, uh, uh, bullshit, uh, um, so, um, Diversity, uh, my, my English came from everywhere. Um, uh, diversity, diversity of capitalism, diversity of institution, diversity of the social arrangement or compromise are one major point to work to understand the situation you try to uh, describe or to, uh, or to uh, uh, understand. Okay, uh, comparison uh, and, and so on. So you, you know some uh, work about um, uh, uh, not, not about um, the work of um, Bruno Amable about diversity of capitalism, which are linked to uh, to uh, Soskis and all. Uh, there is something to to deal or to discuss with Soskis and all, but there is a regulationist uh, background, uh, of course. Um, Fifth, fifth. Uh, time in nice is neither homogeneous nor continuous nor neutral, nor nothing, nor neutral in terms of causation. It's a very important point about how do uh, times uh, works. Uh, how do uh, you can see or uh, produce some regularity, some transformation. Uh, there is some causation, but it is not sequential, not uh, univocal. There is some uh, irrever irreversibilities, but even this if these irre irreversibilities exist, sometimes they broke. For what reason? Technological reason, uh, other transformation. Uh, uh, breaking of the social compromise and so on. Um, so, okay, the main point, the main point the, about the section two, a regulationist method of meso-analysis. This is much more my specialty than the first point, uh, but uh, um, so. so the point about meso-analysis um, uh, could be stressed like that. Regulation theory is a global, more Marxian, 
more macro uh, theory, more methodology, but macroeconomic uh, one. And what I want to say now is that the meso point, meso point for just now, I will say, meso point is not macro, even meso, but intermediary. It is not nothing to say that, but it's a first point. Uh, we think, with our other research, that um, hidden by the macroeconomic uh, development of regulation theory, there are uh, meso regulation. And that is one uh, element to, to, um, to catch the diversity of capitalism, the variety of capitalism, to see how uh, regulation appears at another level than the macroeconomic level. And it's our topic. And I think it could be very useful for you um, to uh, develop and understand those uh, object, purpose, methodology about meso uh, regulation, because uh, you can use it uh, at a very large um, uh, scales of, uh, of topics about football, there is a, a master thesis about regulation of football, uh, uh, prof professional football in Europe, another about bioeconomy, another about the, the care, uh, the, um, the care, um, uh, and so on. About education, about telecommunication, about, um, uh, I don't know. So, uh, the purpose is, uh, partly a methodological, methodological purpose to understand how could we work uh, with and uh, about uh, meso regulation and what are the, these uh, regulations. On a commencé à quelle heure Very car Ok. Um, ok. So, uh, how can the regulation theory find responses to the crisis uh, the regulation theory is conceptual framework able to explain the expanded macroeconomic reproduction of capitalism. One word uh, I have uh, important uh, for us, uh, every word uh, important, uh, uh, macroeconomic reproduction of capitalism is one, uh, I don't know, syntagme, mm, syntagme exists in, uh, in English, uh, expression. Um, what <coughs> uh, if you just um, put your attention about uh, the word re reproduction, uh, you have uh, the, the Marxian um, the framework, framework of, uh, of regulation theory, and you, you can uh, understand what is very important to us is to, to catch how do capitalism at the macroeconomic uh, level or at the mesoeconomic level do uh, reproduce itself. I would, what are the institutions which permit capitalism to, uh, to reproduce itself, uh, to uh, limit uh, violence and the struggle, to uh, pacify some conflict, to, uh, uh, to be pursued. Um, so nowadays, there is a, a lot of uh, challenges. Um, uh, I can develop about uh, economical crisis, social crisis, ecological crisis. Um, if, you, if you want to, 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 to say something about economical crisis, we can say some uh, uh, winning sector, or uh, declining sector, sunrise or sunset sector, sector as say, uh, Bob Jessop. Um, there is some uh, huge defy about uh, social crisis, um, gap, uh, gap, gap, gap in payment and differentiation of status inside and outside companies, um, the end of wage standard, logic of uh, desalarization, and so on. Uh, this first uh, slide uh, of the se this second part is quite general. Ecological crisis, um, emergence of new green sector. Emergence of new green sector, sunset sector. You see, 
when I say sector, or when I say territories, I have in mind mesospaces. And I cannot uh, understand um, the regulation of uh, green sector of, or of all sector in crisis, like uh, automotive, for instance, uh, if I have just macroeconomic uh, instruments or tools. Uh, and my purpose is about the tools which uh, can permit to catch those new regulations. And if uh, mesoeconomic just appear uh, in the end of the 20th century, so uh, 20 years after the uh, regulation theory, it's because during the Fordism, during the growth, the post-World War II growth, um, there is a very um, unified regulation of capitalism, which uh, national regulation, uh, which is uh, very linked to one central industry, uh, automotive industry, for instance, uh, which uh, lead to, to call the, this regulation Fordism, uh, as you know. Um, and after this, uh, this period, after the, the crisis of the 70s, uh, I think there is uh, an important uh, process of social differentiation. Differentiation among the sectors and differentiation among uh, social categories. So there is something like uh, an explosion of a um, quite unified model uh, uh, which call uh, Fordism. We need, so we need to characterize different kinds of capitalism beyond the historical and national as aspect. Um, so our purpose, uh, as I say, is focused on meso-regulation, uh, reflecting the existence of variety of regulation. So variety of regulation could be uh, understood as variety during the time, which, uh, have, which things which have been uh, described by the regulation theory uh, in the 70s and the 80s, but regulation also exists inside an economic regime. Inside the financialized regime, there is a lot of regulation, the different sectors, the different countries, the different professions are not uh, regulated with the same institution, with the same uh, rhythm, uh, and so on. So reflecting the existence of variety of regulation inside an economic regime, reflecting the existence of variety of regulation space and variety of institutional arrangements. Um, we have to, to discuss about uh, the notion of space. What, what is a space? A space could be uh, a, a territory, could be a profession, uh, footballers, uh, maybe, or uh, lawyers. Uh, wait. It's very, uh, something very plastic. You know, plastic, um, like, um, okay, I don't know. Tu sais comment on dit de l'argile? Non. Clay. Clay. Okay, thank you. Uh, like a clay, you know, you uh, use clay to, uh, to, to do a, a sculpture. Uh, it's this, uh, something like a uh, plastic horse. Um, okay. So, uh, variety of space and variety of institutional arrangement. I think institutional arrangement is a way to understand, to understand how do uh, institutional transformation struggles among cap capital and work, but other struggles are, have been uh, or could be uh, uh, stabilized. So there is some arrangement, and uh, one uh, important uh, topic for us is to uh, characterize those arrangements. Um, okay, what are the um, hegemonic block uh, of uh, an arrangement, if you are uh, a bit uh, Gramscian, uh, for instance. Um, the need to get out the macro, uh, the macro-meso-determinism, -determin uh, 
we want uh, to be uh, um, um, oh, I can say that um, we want to understand meso as something which is partly uh, structured by macroeconomic uh, regulation, uh, a sector which is uh, structured by the logic of finance. There is something the type uh, top-down. But our point is that there is something which is uh, related to the autonomy of the meso level, this own arrangements, this own conflict, this own power, this own institutional arrangement, and third, uh, the first linked macro meso, second autonomy of meso, third, there is something like the link from the meso to the macro level. And there is something which haven't uh, been said about uh, Fordism, is uh, the role of one meso level automotive to structure the macro level and in a dialectical relation, the macro level going back to mesos level. And our topic is to have a framework of those dialectical relations among meso and macro, but not one determinism. Okay? Um, the, the need to get out the macro-meso determinism and to label the dominance of a regulation space on other regulation. So uh, the effect from one meso to another meso regulation. Automotive sector, finance sector, which are two sectors uh, which have uh, a, a great role in the two uh, big re macro regulation uh, uh, Fordism and the uh, financialized uh, regime, of course, of course, uh, quite an evidence. Uh, the autonomy of some meso regulation space, space of collective strategy to accommodate and to influence policy decision. There is something which is linked to the strategies of social groups, social groups of workers, social groups of firms, or um, capital, uh, the space of elaboration of specific institutional arrangement where the arrangement are built, how they are built, not just by an intentional way, there is some intention, but the intention, uh, the intentionality of actors, public actors, um, uh, sector actors, uh, territorial actors, and so on, uh, are, are, uh, are in confrontation with other, uh, other dynamic, as, uh, for instance, uh, capital travel, capital, uh, capital um, uh, labor, and, and so on. Um, and this space of social compromise. And space of social compromise could be easy to see ex post, 10 years, 20 years uh, after, but to see where uh, are the new space of compromise uh, when you are just uh, uh, catching the actual uh, organization is very difficult. If you are working about Uber, about your new organization of uh, labo labor force in, in France with the ordinance de, 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 de Emmanuel Macron, uh, it is difficult to, to see the, 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 the form and the construction of compromise. Um, okay? The relation between multiple decisions which are sequential, circular, recursive. Recursive, uh, as, I, as I say uh, in the first part. Uh, cause, effect, cause, loop, so the dialectical uh, nexus or the dialectical relation. Uh, one point uh, quite important is to understand that uh, when a social compromise um, is to be made, is to emerge, uh, this emergence produces transformation of the relation of the strategies Sometimes like uh, something like a uh, pacification, sometimes like uh, a new struggle or moving of the struggle. Uh, regulation 
in the sense of dialectical nexus between meso and macro species, uh, as I said previously. The methodological implication of meso approach is something uh, quite important for uh, heterodoxies, um, I think. You do what you want with that, but I think it's a quite important uh, uh, thing. So, uh, few words about the uh, emergence uh, in the heterodox uh, thought of the meso, uh, the meso uh, issue. Uh, we can um, we can uh, see some uh, papers and some works in the international institution like uh, IMF, uh, the paper of uh, Zeza and Liambi uh, appears uh, uh, when some international organization uh, had found that in Intensive system at macro or micro levels reveals malfunction. It doesn't work. So we have to look some. Um, on dit ailleurs, hein? Tout coup, un trou. Elsewhere. Elsewhere. Thank you. Um, okay? Uh, so uh, just looking at the macro level does not be all time uh, efficient. Uh, so we have to see at the other levels some other arrangement uh, which are not necessarily coherent. Uh, uh, something at the internation of about international in institutions, uh, so uh, IMF. Uh, there is in the evolutionary literature, um, there was a research of an innovation framework to go through uh, a meso approach. Uh, you can see the the great chapter of uh, Elsner um, and uh, I don't know the other um, authors, but okay. The size dimension of complex economy toward the mesoeconomics. Um, and I have to say a word about the French industrial economic school. Uh, we sometimes we say the old uh, French uh, industrial economic school, not the new one about uh, Tyrol. Um, uh, which is not uh, meso, not heterodox, uh, and so on. Uh, but the, the old uh, industrial uh, economic school, uh, Richard Arena, um, De, De Bant, uh, and so on, during the 80s, produced a framework uh, about uh, meso economy, uh, meso economics, uh, with the concept of uh, relevant sub-system, sous-système pertinent. Uh, which is a space of various aspects convergence in the economic dynamics um, and the meso systems are heterogeneous and subject to behavioral and resulting differentiation. You know what's important uh, here for us is the process of differentiation. Because if you just try to, uh, to see the, the, the uh, macro transformation, uh, it's very difficult to see the uh, major transformation of macro regime uh, because of the process of differentiation. And so working at the meso level uh, permits to see different process and after you could or you, or you can work on the convergence or divergence of those different uh, trajectories. Okay? So, uh, in this slide, well, we are on the emergence of the meso issue and after the origin of a regulationist meso approach, uh, which uh, deal with uh, some uh, of this uh, issue. Uh, for instance, with uh, the French Industrial Economic School. Uh, uh, arena, de Bant, and so on. Um, for the for the regulation theory or the regulation approach, they um, I have to to to, to say a few words about a debate on the functionality concept. Uh, the functionality concept uh, uh, emerged especially at the sectorial level. 
for the great sector in the Marxian uh, literature, first sector, second sector, sector which produce uh, uh, good of production and sector which produce good of consumption. Okay? Uh, especially at the sectorial level because of a dispute about the mechanic dimension, the mechanic dimension, not the dialectic, but the mechanic uh, dimension of sectorial space in the Marxist interpretation of functionality. So functionality, it's a point very important. In the, in the uh, Marxian theory, uh, or in the regulationist Marxian theory, um, we, uh, we used to, uh, to deal with functionality to say uh, the different sectors are built by the macro dynamic and ensure a function or a functionality. There is quite a determinism from the macro to the micro level. Okay? It is quite an important uh, theme to, uh, to understand how do the macro level uh, structure the sectors. Uh, but uh, as, we, as you understand, uh, it is not uh, sufficient for us to uh, understand the, uh, the autonomy of the sector and the functionality. So, um, the sector-based analyse um, in the building uh, on public works, on the petrochemical sector, in the wine sector, uh, one of the most important uh, paper about meso, it's about wine in France, I don't know why. Um, maybe, uh, maybe, you, maybe there is something interesting to say, um, or to drink, you know. Um, question the functionalist dimension of the sector. It's about uh, building on public works, petrochemical sectors, and the wine sector that emerge the discussion about functionality. So, uh, our colleague, uh, Boyer, Dutertre, Bartoli, and Boulet, uh, develop the, the concept of semi functionality. Uh, semi functionality, which is a very important concept for mesoeconomics, uh, to characterize the variety of dynamics of sectors linked to their own history. So, semi functionality, as you, as you could understand, it's a, there is a, a bit of functionality, but there are a bit of autonomy on where to understand. In each case, how do these func semi-functionalities work? Uh, autonomies and dependencies. The sector can, in, in return, in the uh, dialectical uh, relation, in return affect the macroeconomic dynamic which depends on the cumulative regime or system. So we, we are in cumulative regime, so there are a dialectical relation, autonomy, dependency, and after cumulation, uh, you can say a process of autonomization of sector or a, project, a process of domination. Okay? You, you understand that I, uh, what I am talking about is about uh, the historical trajectory of mesospaces. Dialectical relation between the functional dimension of the sector and the, uh, in the macrospace and its own dynamic in the mesospace. Sectorial evolution are causal in the structure and stability of accumulation regime. So, you can uh, uh, look at the sector, at the uh, mesospace, to see the disruption, the breaking, breaking down, the breaking down, I know, uh, the disruption in the trajectories of the macro regime or the trajectory of the sectorial uh, regime. There is a different level of regimes. The regulationist meso approach proposes to build a dialectical and historical analysis to understand the relation between macro and mesospaces. It's uh, an important and quite theoretical, but not only theoretical, it's quite uh, linked to uh, a lot of uh, case studies. Um, 
you can see the paper on, in on the historical and national differentiation. So about national differentiation, there is a lot of works. Uh, I, I, I said a, a word about uh, Bruno Amable or uh, about Soskis and all. Uh, Soskis and all, which are not really regulationists, but we, which are in discussion with, uh, with Amable and Ballon Barimini. Um, see the paper on historical, historical, of course, it's uh, the, the basis of regulation theory. Um, the historical national differentiation of the regulation, uh, also ski, amable. So you have the different words where variety of capitalism on Jessop and Soum uh, uses the, the, the concept of variegation, so the process of transformation, the pro pro process of uh, varietization. They use uh, the concept of variegation is quite useful. Uh, you, you, you can uh, read the, their papers. Um, our, the methodology, the, the regulationist methodology, and I, I will say the regulationist meso uh, methodology, um, could be uh, described as an abductive process or an abductive uh, method linked to peers uh, and so on. So, uh, DUI uh, and so on. The territorial and sectorial regulation approach develop an abductive process to build the subject of the analysis in the sense given by Dewey in this pragmatist approach. I think it's a very important uh, methodologic point for you uh, during you are working in your, um, in your thesis, uh, master thesis and after maybe uh, uh, PhD. Um, that the, the, the process to, to define your subject, your topic, your, your, your topic, your, your, the perimeter of your, uh, your questions, uh, define the perimeter, define the nature of the question you are uh, working on is not um, uh, something you are doing before working, but is uh, the um, halfway, okay? Uh, I think it's very important for you uh, when you are working. And you, oh, I don't know why. I, I, do I deal with that? Do I do with this? this? Is it on my topic? Or not? And you, you try to, to discuss with your uh, uh, with uh, your um, professor you are dealing with. And, um, say, I, do I have to work with dealing with this question? Is absolutely fundamental, and it is really a part. Of your work, it is not a, um, a préalable. Je ne sais pas où on dit un préalable. Tu dis comment un préalable? Something uh, préalable. Um, something you have to do before. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, innovation is produced endogenously by the way of historical process. Building stylized fact is a core task of the researcher. And for the meso-analysis, not only for the meso-analysis, but uh, I, I pray for my church. I don't know if you, 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 you can, I can say that in English. Um, uh, okay, that's, forget. Um, building stylized facts is really uh, the major uh, topic, the major work, the major objective or uh, I don't, I don't know for you, but, but for me, of my uh, uh, activity of research. Uh, Stylized facts, uh, uh, it is not an, an process of objectivation. Uh, facts are not objective. You have to, uh, to build those facts, to define how could this fact could be produced could be ordered, could be, uh, be understood, okay? The elaboration of, the, of what is studied, the system is regularity, is crisis, but it's quite macro. Uh, you can say uh, about one object more uh, defined, more meso, uh, uh, is in the same time a method and a result, okay, uh, of the research process. It is not possible to determine 
a priori the frame and the scope of the relevant subsystem and of the running meso regulation. So, as you can understand, you are working about a meso space. You are dealing with this meso space, and you don't know a priori uh, what are the frontiers. But you have to define the frontier, and you, you can say, if I take uh, this definition by the, the law, uh, the frontier are this one. But if I, uh, if I watch as a uh, the labor nexus, oh no, 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 the, the frontier are not exactly the same. And if I say, uh, if I look at the, um, uh, the relation on the global chain value, it's not exactly the same uh, perimeters, okay? You have to, to build your topic and the frontier um, in the same time. So, objective, you have your frame framework, you are going to, to catch the realities to uh, what uh, uh, Frédéric Lordon uh, dit, il faut aller voir, you have to go to see the reality, you have to build some uh, inquiry, etc. Allez voir. Um, and, um, okay. So, uh, no, you have your framework. You, you are going to see, to catch, to, uh, and after you are going back to your framework to, uh, to redefine it if necessary. So, it's the main, uh, the main slide. Um, the, it could be the only one, but not. Uh, Major regulations on various levels. Uh, territory, sector, value chain, profession, maybe, and so on, if you want. Um, territory, space where identities are built and from which collective development dynamics are undertaken. There is some work, I can say a lot of work, about um, territorial meso-analysis, not only at the national level, but uh, I don't know if I can say under national level, uh, maybe. Uh, I, can, I, I imagine you understand. Um, uh, space where structural forms, uh, structural forms are uh, the forms of uh, labor relation, the form of the uh, social protection, the form of uh, the um, uh, of competition and so on, uh, which are uh, partly inherited from the past, are articulated with an action of situated player. Situated player means uh, all the player, uh, of course, have a situated rationality. Um, uh, but a situated uh, mode of organization, a way of thinking, and a situated way to anticipate the future. Uh, we can, uh, we, you, you can uh, link that to comments on the concept of futurity. You know the concept of futurity uh, by comments? The concept of futurity by comments is very useful here to uh, catch how do social groups, uh, players, situated actors, do uh, understand or try to understand, catch and try to catch, uh, project and try to project, etc. Uh, in the future. The, 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 their way of thinking the future and their way of uh, uh, entering in the future. The making of the future and the anticipation of the uh, future. Uh, okay? Uh, not rational anticipation, of course. Uh, the process of futurity by uh, social groups. And uh, in the resolution of the productive issue. About the evolution of productive issue. Productive issue. It's a uh, productive system and uh, social and labor relation, uh, of course. Uh, I can, uh, I can, uh, I can um, 
just quote uh, some of the papers, works uh, that have been uh, uh, developed in this way. The, a lot of works about the third Italy. Uh, you know the world about the third Italy, about Bagnasco uh, uh, and that uh, researcher. Uh, it's a very uh, important uh, set of, um, of work about the uh, autonomy of a region uh, third Italy, uh, uh, there is the north, the south, and the third, uh, the Emilia Romagna, Emilia Romagna. There is an Italian, uh, yes. yeah, Emil Emilia Romagna. No, no? okay, <laughs> raté. Um, et, um, donc, uh, so uh, third Italy. Um, the, um, there is a lot of, uh, of paper about uh, Asia. Uh, you can. Uh, uh, read some of them in the uh, regulation review uh, in, the, uh, in the last, uh, last uh, issue of a regulation review about China. Um, in Latin America, uh, okay, for the for the, uh, the aspect of uh, national or sub subnational, uh, not under uh, national subnational regulations. Um, if you see the service to individuals, the care. Uh, if you prefer, um, the, 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 thesis, the, the, the PhD thesis of uh, Florence Galois uh, is very interesting for us because she tried to work about the sector, the care sector, or the, the service to individual sector. She deal with a, a big uh, uh, inquiry on, the, on this sector, and the, the result is there is not a, a sectorial uh, regulation, but a territorial regulation. What is much more important to, uh, to catch the institutional arrangement is not only the sector, but is the arrangement produced by the territory, by the actors uh, at the territorial level. Uh, third example, the process of urban differentiation, uh, the process of the cities, of the great cities, according to sustainable development in the cities, um, uh, or the uh, work about urban nature, uh, as uh, Nathalie Blanc uh, speak about a few weeks uh, uh, later. Uh, so, a, a set of, uh, of works about the uh, maze Territory as the meso regulation. Okay, second set of uh, of works, uh, the meso, maybe the major one, uh, 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 stabilized form of consistent relation, and for sector uh, meso regulation, what is important is uh, not to uh, define a priori the perimeter of a sector, but to see where are the frontiers of a new sector. There is there are a process of desectorization. You are working in the, uh, during the the eighties about telecommunication, and there is a process of desectorization because there is a huge uh, movement of uh, transformation of uh, the sector of um, uh, inform uh, information uh, sector. Uh, informatics, uh, uh, new, tech, new tech, and uh, on telecom. So there is a process of desectorization. Uh, very important in the telecom, uh, and more generally for the e-economics. Outcomes of process of institutionalization, of relation of competition, and of cooperation. What we have to, uh, to, uh, to catch is um, how the process of competition uh, evolves, structured by laws, by rules, and structured by uh, opportunities of growth for different actors. Some actors, as in the matrix of uh, Michael Porter, some actors try to uh, go in the new markets or uh, to, uh, to uh, run out of old markets. So there are some uh, movement and those movements are producing uh, the transformation of this process of institutionalization. Uh, 
something we, we call, uh, generally speaking, process of deregulation. If you, you, are, you catch the process of deregulation of uh, taxis uh, with Uber, it's a process of deregulation of uh, transport uh, inside uh, urban uh, uh, metropoles. Okay? So the, the transformation of the rules, uh, which uh, a struggle, as you know, for, uh, for Uber and the taxi, and for Airbnb and the, uh, the business of uh, location, uh, and so on. Okay? Um, so the example of telecommunication, as I said previously, uh, the emergence of green sector. There is a lot uh, of paper about uh, bioeconomy, uh, about chemistry, about green chemistry, uh, about uh, energy sector, um, and about uh, anthropogenetic sector. Anthropogenetic sector is quite an unusual word uh, developed by Robert Boyer. Anthropogenetic sector is the sector. Uh, which uh, permit the reproduction of a human being, uh, health and care, and uh, knowledge and uh, uh, education. And uh, what uh, Robert Boyer is uh, saying with this uh, 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 anthropogenetic sector is that there are two main sectors which are emerging from a long period which uh, could be who are, uh, are to be uh, the main sector of uh, organization uh, of the industrial processes, um, which are very specific because they are dealing with human beings. And we are, they are dealing with uh, public sectors or semi-public sector, uh, even if in the uh, United States it's not a public sector, uh, as you know. Uh, so there is a, a, a book of uh, Robert Boyer about the uh, anthropogenetic uh, sector, which is uh, uh, quite a good one. Uh, third, uh, third meso regulation, um, third meso regulation about uh, value chain. Uh, some paper I have developed a process uh, to to catch the meso regulation uh, dealing with corporate social responsibility inside uh, global value chain. The paper of uh, Peut-être, uh, uh, maybe, sorry, maybe uh, have you um, uh, discussed uh, with Florence, uh, Florence Vercher about uh, corporate? No? Not yet. Not yet, Not yet but uh, nearly. Yeah. Um, value chain, a specific form of organization of competition between firms uh, that are formally independent but linked in those chains. Uh, is there... Uh, we, have, we can uh, have some uh, very important uh, research, uh, I think, about uh, what are those regulations at the meso, chain, the, um, the meso level in the global value chain. Is, is, uh, is there some uh, meso regulation or not? I think yes. Uh, uh, who are the key players? Uh, are they downstream or upstream? in the chain uh, wheels, uh, and so on. So some paper uh, on CSR, I, 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 I read, uh, I uh, write, sorry, one of two, and Palpacuer on the Vercher. You are, you, Palpacuer work with Vercher about um, uh, CSR and the uh, global value chain. And uh, last, maybe not least, uh, the meso level uh, catch uh, dealing with the profession. The profession, uh, uh, the PhD of, uh, of Jeremy Bastien um, about uh, professional football in, uh, in Europe. And what is the process of financialization of uh, the professional football? What deal with the macro transformation process of financialization, and what deals the specific issue of uh, football, professional football? Uh, quite specific, but very uh, uh, interesting. And you can uh, work about medicine, about education, uh, and so on. So, at each uh, le at each level. You uh, have to, uh, to work on the nature of the compromise, on the nature of the bargainings, on the rules, 
which are uh, stabilize the relation. And you have uh, um, a framework to go to see uh, meso regulations. Uh, so uh, meso is one space of regulation dealing with other um, other levels, macro levels, as I, I as I said previously. And uh, you have to define for each situation, not in the general theory, but for football, for education, for third Italy, for etc. You have to deal with what is really regulated in this mesospace. How does the process of institutionalization works? or not at the mesospace, how the regulation works, uh, uh, well, to, to work, to, to, uh, to produce still is a fact about how the regulation works, and which economic or social space the regulation takes place, the perimeters. Okay? So the regulation could be understood as Reproduction of instituted nexus among players, the process of reproduction of um, compromise. In the same time, the interorganizational coordination process at the meso level, it's not the same, uh, the same topic, the same object, the same purpose. And you have to deal with the space of break, crisis, impossibility of reproduction to deal with uh, the long waves and the break, the breaks. Such coordination assume the existence of social compromise. Such coordination create social compromise. You see the dialectical relation, uh, building social compromise, uh, reproduction of social compromise, breaking of social compromise. So there are some confrontation of political intentionality, um, but the building of the meso level is not exclusively intentional. It is provocated by unintentional confrontation of intentionality. On n'est plus 95 diapo, t'inquiète. Um, J'ai encore un petit peu. Cinq minutes. Uh, so, uh, various tension within uh, macro regime, uh, conditioning, structuring of the ruling dominant regime, as I say in, the, uh, in my introduction, uh, in sustaining the central function activity uh, on which the regime is focused. So, uh, if you take automotive, as I say, or if you take um, finance, or even Uh, technology, te telecom, digital technology, you have a, a meso regulation. And if you uh, work in those regulations, and if you see how do the meso regulation produce rules uh, which will be the rules for the other sector, you made a, a big job for macroeconomists and other mesoeconomists. So, uh, Sabine Montagne and Horacio Ortiz uh, working in the, in the, about uh, financial regime, two sociologists, sociologists, anthropologists, sociologists, economists uh, working on, on, the, on finance, uh, deal with this idea. There is some meso-regulation of finance and there are They nearly say, but I say for them, uh, I'm a very uh, good guy, um, there are the, the basis of the meso-financial regulation, and after you can uh, understood, you can understand sorry, uh, the, um, the relation of the meso-regulation and the ability of this meso-regulation to, uh, to uh, produce the rule on the structure of the other sector. The empowerment of finance um, uh, in the other in the other sector. Okay, uh, in some uh, homological uh, perspective, you can say the, some, the, the, the same uh, the same things for automotive during the uh, the fifties and and sixties, and maybe uh, you have some. Uh, 
some idea to deal with uh, numerical, numerical revolution and the ability of uh, new actors of the numerical uh, intermediation to build uh, the new markets and the, or, or the new intermediation. Okay? It could be very uh, powerful. In fulfilling a support function, so the first time is uh, in sustaining the central function, in fulfilling a support, uh, a support function with, without imposing a general rule, fulfill a function through an autonomous regulation. It is not, it is not the same point. The, in, the, in the first point, we, we, uh, we have to deal with some uh, meso-regulation which produce a macro role. In the second uh, category, you have a meso-regulation useful for the macro level, but which do not structure the macro level, which do not structure the other level. For the, um, uh, the building and public works, uh, this uh, sector do not produce rule for other sector. It is the same way for agriculture. In, the, uh, in another issue of a regulation review, you have uh, some paper, some meso paper about agriculture, which are uh, quite uh, interesting. Donc, so, first time, conditioning, structuring of the ruling dominant regime, conditioning by the dominant regime, through the form of competition, through the norm of wage labor nexus, as uh, in the case of uh, professional football and the case of uh, service to individuals. So you have not the same relation, the same domination uh, among meso-macro relation. And third uh, possibility, uh, conditioning of the meso to one another uh, through the nature of compromise, through the form taken by the meso balance of power, uh, and so on. Uh, first conclusion, just two slides. Um, conclusion one, um, the meso level is unfinished regulation with no determinist relation to the macro level. So we have to, uh, to, to deal with the uh, uh, questioning, uh, again, the issue of a mode of regulation, what's the main concept of uh, regulation theory, in order to extend it. So you have the, um, the definition, the very classical definition of, uh, of uh, mode of regulation by, by Robert Boyer, set of procedures and of individual and collective behaviors under with three properties reproducing the basic social relations through the conjunction of historically determined institutional forms, reproducing, supporting and driving the ongoing regime of accumulation. Three, answering the dynamic consistency of a set of decentralized decisions. So, uh, uh, what can we say about the mode de regulation, uh, uh, mode of regulation, pardon, uh, at the meso level? Is there something like a complete mode of regulation or just uh, another uh, category of regulation? Uh, so it's may, in, in, uh, quite important question if you if you deal with uh, the, the concept of regulation, of course. Um, questioning the partial and local regulations that are inserted into macro regulation, their compromise can be support in the meso space. Three regulation which are not so intermediary. In the first time, I say it's intermediary, but the, the concept of inter intermediary is a, a, a bit weak. Uh, regulation which are not so intermediary, uh, in the sense of uh, between the macro level and the player. Then other regulation, or the type, or the categories of regulation. So other concept, uh, but the same word. Um, not so intermediary, but other regulation, regulations that are not uh, on another level, but another operating modes. On our research, my, <laughs> you, I don't know, uh, is to define these operating modes, uh, which are uh, 
uh, which is in, in, uh, an invitation to the plurality of, uh, of uh, the operating mode. Plurality of looping, understanding the dominant regulation in each studied uh, field, checking how the macro devices are binding but not deterministic. And last, um, conclusion two, uh, the meso level uh, an epistemological posture and research method. So it's not a theory, it's not a main theory, it's not a general theory. It is a posture uh, in the sense of um, uh, a way of working for the researcher. Um, and it is a, a methodology, uh, a guide, uh, and we are we're trying to, uh, to develop more the, this methodology uh, uh, now. Um, when you can read it uh, uh, when it will be published. <laughs> Um, so, triple, triple meaning of the meso concept, the meso, economy, the meso economic scales, you can use uh, meso uh, as uh, meso scales, scales in the sense of collective level or level of aggregation, it's one, uh, um, one meaning. Um, the meso economic uh, as intermediary devices, uh, device as rules, mode of coordination, relation between formal and informal rules. You have the scales, you have the devices, um, and third, uh, the nature of meso regulation that move beyond the contradiction and produce a temporary compromises which can be strong or weak, uh, according to the, the, the cases, the lot of cases you can uh, work on. And, and uh, last point, you, you can deal with ex-ante regulation and ex-post regulation. Uh, uh, regulation theory used to uh, work uh, on ex-post regulation, uh, looking at the historical uh, trajectory in the long term. Um, uh, so ex-post regulation, uh, that have been created uh, and that have created a system. On the ex ante regulation, it's very useful if you are dealing with the actuality, with the uh, struggles, uh, with the transformation uh, that have uh, uh, that are uh, actuality actually uh, uh, move. Uh, ex ante regulation, collective and political strategies. Uh, okay. I will not deal with the third part. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was really uh, well put. Um, we kind of realized going through it that some I, of our. I think it's turned off. I don't know. Okay, it's for you. <laughs> okay, please go on. I have to to say it I, um, okay. louder, <laughs> but. Um, uh, yeah, it, it, it made us um, think that we should jump actually some of our slides, so <laughs> it's good. Um, and um, so yes, we are both C option students, so the development option. Um, so the outline, basically we will start by introducing, uh, introducing the French regulation school. Then we will uh, skip the definition because they were very well put in the presentation. Then we will go with the regulation uh, as a dynamic model which is very important when we are analyzing the meso uh, analysis, which is our next section. We will give you an example, um, and then critiques and questions. And uh, you have already the question in front of you, so yeah. you can prepare now. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> no, I okay, I try. Um, so I will go really quick on this because I think it was covered already in the beginning of the presentation. So we have here the French Regulation School started with Hobbit Boya, Aglietta, Coyat, and etc. And their main focus, their main point of uh, where they start is uh, kind of trying to differentiate themselves with the mainstream, with the neoclassical school. So bringing constant change, dynamism from the, uh, to the, to the ana analysis of uh, economics and uh, the whole uh, structure, and then bringing institutions and interaction uh, instead of the methodological individualism. Uh, also, inductive or abductive, as was said in the, as was mentioned in the, in the presentation, instead of the deductive approach, and then um, also hetero heterogeneity as a constitutive and not as an anomaly. That we know that uh, 
different things, different market structures are anomaly for neoclassical and the, the French regulations school try to deal with these uh, differences. Uh, and also, uh, it was already mentioned, but uh, the French Regulation School, it's a building, it, it was built by at least three main uh, blocks, the Marxist, Heterodox, Macro, Keynes, and Kalecki, and the Analysis School, I will not uh, go through that. The definitions, here we were not sure, uh, because there's a lot of different definitions for most of, most of us, so I don't think we are going through them uh, in deep, maybe we can come back uh, if it's needed. Um, yeah. So we have, uh, yeah, process, meso, yeah. So. Um, maybe just a point about the definition. What we can see from them is that, yes, you have the regulation school, but then we are talking about spaces, you are talking about processes, and then you are talking about meso school, uh, meso uh, level. Um, which points that it's actually a very dynamic kind of cycle with different levels that we, so this we have to keep in mind. Um, so yes, the regulation school is a dynamic model. Um, we can understand it uh, as a system, economic system that operates under mechanism um, of decomposition and recomposition. Um, in which the contours uh, of the mesospaces and interactions uh, between heterogeneous agents are always reconfigured. Um, these tension, conflicts, and opportunity um, are arising at the meso level. And for the creation of, uh, they are very core to the creation of these sectorial and territorial spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so, quoting La Marche, um, we, uh, we can say that the emergence of the forms of sectoral organization, they firstly and especially complies with a very large of sectorial interests and constraints. And so we are indeed talking about a dialectic process between macro and meso levels, uh, which is necessary to uh, understand the emergence of crisis. Um, so we are focusing, as it's a dynamic model, on the process rather than the final results. Um, and to quote again, I would say um, economic development is a product of a complex social formation where the course of action remains largely uncertain. So the, uh, the concept of uncertainty is very core to, to the model. Um, and indeed, we don't have intentionality. It's not a direction like a a specific direction like in the, uh, in the um, neoclassical school. To quote again, uh, Monsieur Lamarche, um, economic institutions don't appear automatically in answer to economic needs. So it's not driven by single interest or simple uh, kinds of um, processes. There is no assumption on a state of stability, um, nor uh, as an end uh, state of functionalism. Um, so, it adds a lot of complexity to the analysis of economic situation, which is very uh, positive in order to and allows us to express reality. Uh, so, here uh, we took this, uh, we simplified actually this figure, trying to uh, show the whole dynamics, uh, the whole process of the dynamic model, especially in the French Regulation School. So, we took this picture from Amable and Paolo Barini from 2017. So here we, he, we have this very complex uh, uh, pattern where you have politics, anthropology, economics, and institutions, each of them uh, determining and being determined, determined by uh, influenced and being influenced, influencing and being influenced uh, in, in a very, in a, in a very, uh, a very complex uh, system. And uh, uh, later we will, we will try to put the meso inside this because this is more specifically the French regulation school and not the meso and not the, the paper that we are commenting with per, per se. So if we try to add to this the meso level, uh, we can uh, look at interaction between the meso and the macro. So we have the macro level here uh, and the meso level there. So a functionalist, a purely functionalist point of view where you would have maybe more deterministic um, approach would be um, that the macro level is determining completely the meso level. So this is what you can see on the top of the, uh, the figure. 
However, what this analysis brings, it, it brings agency to the, the meso level, actually. So there will be influences coming from both parts, from the macro to the meso and the meso to the macro. So this is why we are calling semi-functionalism. Um, these spaces of the meso at the meso level have a certain degree of autonomy, um, which is then cr enabling in them to be actors in a way, actors of change in the macro level, and spaces of differentiation, as mentioned before. Um, and these will all influence the accumulation regimes that are being shaped and created. <laughs> okay. Um, so, where is the meso analysis in the re regulation school? In a way, it is a bit fundamentally inside the, the regulation by, by its nature of saying that it's important to understand how sectors are interacting and how this is not a fixed, fixed um, point, uh, general theory. Um, so we can see many advantages to understanding and taking into account meso uh, level. So here are some of them. Um, so first, it constitutes a tool to understand accumulation and structural crisis. Then it also integrates politics and institution and their transformation into economics, which is often forget in, uh, forgotten in the mainstream. It, fr it provides grounds to discuss the articulation and configuration of economic system. And it enables dynamic analysis and understands the foundation and transformation. More, uh, more advantage are uh, to I be able to, uh, to allow to identify spaces of autonomy and semi-autonomy, uh, complement the macro approach by structuring the macro regime and setting co-determinism between the two levels, and discussing heterogeneity and specificity. The last point is very important. Uh, so here we have the example that we took from the text about the telecommunications. Uh, I think in the presentation we already he already um, made the point of the telecommunications and how uh, the sector was uh, changed and uh, how it was influenced by the um, the macro and uh, uh, vice versa. So I would like to put a, a different example from uh, Bartol and Boulet from the wine sector that was mentioned already. Um, so you can forget the slide. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, we wanted to bring a innovation because, um, yeah, and it's the wine sector. So, uh, so uh, Bartol and Boulet, the, if you if you say if you think okay, the wine sector is macro, so. Uh, demand and uh, supply will be will set the prices and all prices will be, will be the same but if we go to the supermarket we know that wine they have different prices you can pay 50,000 in a bottle of wine but you can pay one euro so okay so there is something there and uh, their work they try uh, they show that in 1935 with the creation of the appellation the origine contrôlée, they completely changed the wine business where they created a, a dualistic uh, sector where in one side you have these protected uh, uh, farms and producers with very uh, uh, big, a lot of quality, a lot of um, uh, innovations, a lot of capitalization, but you have the other regions where you have uh, archaic and uh, overproduction and low quality. So this is this is an example of the meso. So we cannot aggregate uh, the the wine business or any business as one, but see the dualistics and the interactions within the the, the sector. So uh, and now we come uh, with some critiques that we try to uh, to uh, to build. So the first would be rather than being an, an analysis situated between ma uh, micro and macro levels, the, me uh, the meso methodology seems to undermine the role of the uh, micro dimension and focus on the interaction with the macro level. Uh, reading the paper, we thought that okay, there was this semi-functionality between meso and macro, but w uh, I mean, we still have agents, we still have firms. Uh, I, I don't know. For us, it seems like there was some this link missing. 
that maybe uh, uh, Monsieur Lamarche can comment uh, more about it. And then uh, the second critique, uh, we, it, it's difficult to identify who are the different actors influencing the formation of institutions in the meso or regulation school. Indeed, there is a, a relative absence of analysis of the distribution of power between actors, institutions, and sectors. Uh, here we also thought about, uh, uh, okay, we are trying to bring reality and complexity, but we need to uh, pinpoint some uh, key actors. Is it the state? Is it a key uh, firm? Is it uh, consumers? Who are these, uh, these important actors? But more important than that, how is the distribution of power within these, these players and how the, the bargain process is built? Because we know that uh, workers don't have the same bargain power as a multinational firm and how, how this uh, dialect, how this bargain power is constructed. So two more critiques. Uh, first, we think that the state is a very uh, key actor at the meso level. Um, so that raised some question in a way. Uh, so because the state is able to do recomposition and decomposition of the meso spaces and have a role in this, um, we, we thought that the analysis uh, does not define the specific character of the state and how it connects to uh, making policies exactly in a more specific way. Um, but this is also being very critique of the paper because it's an introduction to the potential of meso, uh, meso space. Then we also uh, think that uh, the influence of the international sphere on national dynamics seems constrained in the meso analysis. Uh, as we are see students, uh, the importance of uh, globalization and uh, the importance of the difference that are operating in the s system in the south um, should be really covered then. It's really critical with, with that kind of uh, with that kind of critique. Um, maybe just uh, to conclude a bit the critique section, um, it's important to understand that the, the meso uh, regulation, if we can call it like this and put everything together, um, uh, is, uh, is a methodology. So how we are using it or criticizing it shouldn't forget that it's a methodology and that um, it doesn't aim to be a general theory. So how, how we want to talk about it and, cre um, and, and, and criticize it, it also has to include that we actually also can shape it and push it further as, a, uh, as an approach and, and it, it, it gives space for this. Um. So uh, now we have four questions. Uh, we can, uh, they are divided in four slides, but we can come back. So the first question would be, if one wants to use the French regulation school and the meso methodology, this is more practical for, we, know, we, we are in this situation where we need to write a thesis, so if someone is interested in uh, writing about that, which qualitative and quantitative data sources uh, should we look at in a more practical way in using this method, if someone is interested in using this methodology? And uh, could you comment on the different limitations that emerged from this method, the difficulties of uh, using, the, uh, using this approach? So this would be the first question. The second question is, by the use of institutional and historical elements, regulation approach seems to allow for a certain predicting power that limits uncertainty. This is more, uh, we were thinking more in the past dependency in the in this historical heritage that uh, maybe the regulation uh, they try to bring. So um, it, maybe we see there is a predicting power that uh, we, we maybe try, we maybe know that what, what can happen because of this historical heritage. So uh, to which extent meso-analysis differentiates itself from fundamental certain uncertainty and structural fatalism? The third question, uh, we have four questions in total. Uh, the third question is focusing on the tension between macro and micro uh, economics. One strong critique of the post keynesian uh, to neoclassical economic is the fallacy of composition. Going back to the regulation school, um, we ask to which extent and in which way is the meso-analysis able to solve such fallacy of composition? Composition of what? 
composition of what? Uh, the, the fallacy of composition. Um, the fourth question is, uh, uh, this master being focused on economic policies, we are interested in uh, the predicting power of the regulation school. Mesovo methodology allows to identify many undiscovered dynamics and linkages, uh, unlike many uh, economic schools of thought. Uh, in the ex post analysis, is the method limiting the ability of uh, prescribing policies? And also, we, uh, we would like to, uh, that you elaborate maybe a bit more on the uh, uh, ex, -ante, um, uh, yeah, ex ante regulation uh, that you mentioned in the presentation. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Um, first, I, I will say a few words about uh, the, the critics and after the question, if you. Yeah. If you agree, um, so um, the critics. Um, what was the first critics? Rather than being an analysis between micro and macro level, the reason they seem to undermine the role. Of so ah, um, macro uh, micro dimension. So um, in in, a, in our topic, you are right. In our in in our uh, Purpose. Uh, we are dealing with um, uh, regulationist corpus, uh, which is or which where uh, uh, was um, um, macro. Uh, so we are uh, pleading for the meso level, as you understand. Uh, so we are dealing uh, uh, to. Uh, not to be deterministic uh, from the macro to 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 the micro, uh, but uh, we can we we can have the other way to to discuss with the micro di dynamic on the on the neoclassical uh, schools, but uh, uh, I am boring uh, about uh, have a paper of uh, that size. That that side to discuss with neoclassical and that side to discuss heterodoxy. So, uh, for me, uh, I don't want to spend my time to discuss with uh, neoclassical methodology. Uh, do you see in the neoclassical paper something or some uh, lines discussing with uh, heterodoxy? No way. So, ah, it's my purpose. Uh, off record. Uh, no, in record if you want. Um, but uh, so I deal. Uh, I, my my answer is uh, so nearly a um, false uh, answer because I, I deal with a neoclassical point of view of your of your uh, your question. About, it's about uh, uh, micro dimension. So the first part is about uh, the micro as a just uh, a representative agent uh, and some. Uh, so I do not want to speak about that. So uh, my, ris my, my answer will um, uh, open to the conventional economy. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, nowadays, uh, if you uh, have a look to um, the, the paper, the regulationist meso paper, there is a lot uh, of uh, references to uh, how do conventions uh, uh, are built. Uh, what is the strategy of actors? It's another critics, I think. Uh, uh, the strategy of actors of some groups, uh, and how do they deal? How do they f even fight? Uh, uh, and uh, what is the process of building arrangement? And these uh, these developments uh, could be said as meso, but it deal with actors. Actor as a group, not as just individuals, but as a groups. So I think with the meso analysis, we deal not with a really micro as an individual agent, but micro as a small groups, small arrangement, 
And uh, one way to deal with that is to uh, use sometimes the, um, the, the tools of uh, regulation theory, but uh, to accept to deal with uh, some of the very important uh, works of uh, conventional economy, uh, which are uh, linked, uh, grounded uh, on the micro, on the micro, sorry, on the micro uh, perspective. So uh, you are right, micro is not uh, the major topic, but uh, inside the, the paper, uh, in, the, uh, in the details, uh, you have to deal with the, uh, the, the, the micro uh, development. Uh, if, I, if I have a, a word about uh, this, uh, this PhD uh, on the football, I spoke about PhD because it, it's on my desk and I have to, to make a report uh, for uh, the end of the week. Uh, so um, I have in mind, um, uh, he is going uh, to, to see what do tell uh, this, uh, this uh, Manchester club or uh, the PSG or uh, the, is the PSG on Manchester United a micro agent? You know Manchester United, a football yes. player? Um, is it micro or is it meso? It's a question you have to up. Uh, you don't know. You you can say it's micro because it was one firm, but you say nothing. So, is it this micro actor, uh, Manchester United? You want me to speak about? I say, uh, when uh, Jeremy Bastien works on the foot, uh, professional football, uh, he deals with um, Manchester United and uh, Schalke uh, uh, 04 and so on. Okay? So he deals with uh, uh, actor as firm or as a financial fund or as managers. So they, they are linked to uh, that sort of uh, agent. If, if it is agent, but uh, uh, never uh, I use uh, the, the word agent. Okay, you, 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 right. you see, Miko is not really totally absent, but is, uh, we don't, um, we have not deal with a discussion uh, micro meso. Maybe uh, we have to, uh, <laughs> it's possible. The first question, uh, okay. Uh, the second, no, the second one. The second one, difficult to identify who are the different actors influencing the formation. So, I nearly deal with the second, uh, the second question. Uh, if you uh, don't speak about football, but about uh, the care, uh, the social care, uh, Florence Gallois, which uh, uh, work on that uh, topic, uh, deal with uh, the nearly micro arrangement uh, between two uh, association of uh, of social care with uh, the um, the conseil regional uh, which is a uh, conseil uh, general the department which are financing the social activity so there is something like a, like a local arrangement with the actor which have uh, which are defined by laws by rule by practices so uh, it deal with another question. It deal with the inquiry, the social inquiry. Uh, you have to go to see, to uh, to discuss with the actor, to uh, compare the different status. Is it a firm? Is it an association? It is a public status. So um, uh, the different actor influence uh, permanently the formation of not the big institution uh, like uh, uh, Israel wage labor nexus. But the meso institution, the uh, uh, institutional device, we call them institutional device, uh, which, uh, which could be very important to, uh, to define how do the um, uh, remuneration of footballer is made, how the remuneration of uh, nurse is made. Uh, it's not the same, as you know. Um, okay? So w you are uh, in the... Um, in the social and uh, economic social inquiry uh, to uh, to catch all these devices uh, and to define how do they uh, produce or not regularities about uh, wage about um, uh, 
uh, mode of competition, uh, about re relation to uh, consumer, and so on. Okay, you you see um, the so different actor influencing the formation of the institution. Not the indeed. And the relation of power between actors, uh, you have to build that at each, uh, not at each level, but uh, in each case studies. You work in a, about a university uh, education, you have to deal with the institution which uh, deal with the uh, job market for teacher, with the uh, job market or not for students, with the fees, uh, how do the fees are determined in France, uh, in the uh, UK, in the... Uh, so you have to deal with the balance of power, with the structure of the social, uh, the, the social state, and so on. So um, my, my paper, uh, you, you, the paper you read under my topic today, um, is built to be more methodological, so a, a bit uh, high. Uh, but if you read papers on uh, uh, bioeconomy, on football, on care, on wine, as a, so you have, if you read the paper uh, about wine, uh, you see the, the, the really details to define um, the labels, the evolution of consumption, uh, the different actors which uh, uh, intrigate to make label. There is a paper on the regulation review about um, uh, comment dit, uh, commerce equitable. Fair trade, sorry. So about fair trade, you see all the, the, the constitution of the labels of fair trade, the struggle or tension uh, among uh, NGOs to define the, the labels, the struggle with uh, distribution, uh, Walmart, uh, Carrefour, and so on. So you you are in the uh, in the in the field with the uh, the actors and with the struggles to define the the rule of competition, the rule of labeling the rule of quality for the wine, as you say, uh, the, much, the importance of, uh, of uh, regime, uh, quality regime, it's uh, the, the key point for the wine industry, defining the, the, um, the quality regime. Defining the quality regime, you have to see for the different quality of wine, how do they define uh, some rules to, uh, to structure qualities, to structure prices, to structure links to different um, uh, consumer uh, for uh, Chateau Ikem, it is not the same for, uh, and so on. And for the, for the wine, it's quite an important structure of uh, consumption. Okay? Um, alors, the State is the key actor at the meso level in the sense that it is capable of uh, decomposing meso space. All the analysis does not define um, the specific character of the state and how it's connected to policy making. You think so? It is not defined. So um, you're right, if it's not defined, I, I, I will say some, some words about it. Um, I think for all the, the meso regulation, uh, in your uh, abductive process, you have to define where uh, the rules are uh, built. Uh, if you, are, uh, you, you work about the care, um, as uh, Florence Galois, you define what is, uh, you have to, to deal with what is defined in the law, uh, national law, about uh, the, the um, definition of uh, competencies of the, the people working uh, in the care uh, industry, if you so want to say industry or services. Uh, it's uh, national. Uh, you have to define uh, what are the contracts uh, produced by the, the, the level at, uh, of the region, uh, defining uh, the, the time of, uh, of production of our, our relation, so the contractual uh, definition. So um, you have to, uh, to deal with uh, uh, what is built by the, at the national state, sometimes very important in France, uh, not uh, in uh, Germany, uh, for instance, for the same uh, industry. Uh, and what is defined uh, inside the, the sector himself, uh, itself, and what is defined by the, the cities sometimes. So you have the deconstruction of the, of the national state because you have to, um, to define the, the set of rules which are really in use 
to uh, to develop some uh, some arrangement. So uh, you uh, you enter very deeper uh, inside the process of uh, ruling. So uh, we deal we deal with uh, an acceptation of uh, state, uh, not as a unified state, but some of uh, confrontation, uh, subsegmentation, and how do they deal with the economic sector? Uh, if you take the football, it's uh, 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 sometimes very important to define what are the rules, uh, European rule, uh, national rule, uh, national rule, uh, just a bit, no, European rule, very important to, 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 to build a, uh, a sector, which is another question you, 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 you stress, uh, at the international level. So sometimes the, the sector is uh, sub-national, uh, sub-nationally structured, sometimes it's, it's di directly uh, international, as for instance for, for football. It's uh, more uh, macro-regional, uh, Europe, for, uh, for instance. Uh, and if I want to, to, to work about uh, basketball, uh, uh, I see the relation with the NBA, uh, uh, how the NBA can structure all the, 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 the uh, basketball uh, structure, uh, not all over the world, but in Europe. And so, on. so you have to deal with the, the state and the articulation of uh, uh, how do the state produce some rules and how do the rules are producing, uh, producing elsewhere. Okay? So uh, there is a lot of, uh, of work about the states in the regulation uh, um, uh, theory, uh, but you don't have to read everything. You have to deal with the question how uh, and where are built uh, the rules which are defining the, uh, the organization of uh, your, uh, your space. Okay? So it's. Um, okay, I'm so third question. You critique the. J'en suis où? The role of the state, the actor, the micro, and the uh, dernier, the influence of international. Well, so, uh, I, uh, I deal with this uh, question. Uh, this question is very, very important because sometimes you, um, you want to, 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 to stay at the, at the national level because the statistics, it's another, it's one of your questions. The statistics are national, it's more easy to work. Uh, where is the light, uh, as you know? Uh, so there is national statistic. I work this. You, you know, it's a big problem to work where it's uh, easy to work uh, because you, you can see uh, nothing and every, everyone is seeing the, the same nothing. It is not very useful, I think, but... Uh, um, so, uh, sometimes the sector are uh, really structured at the national level, but you can see uh, the very importance of uh, 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 global value chain or you can see the importance of... Um, a mode of competition with quite uh, uh, international uh, internationalization of uh, of competition is um, uh, uh, a way to uh, to disrupt uh, the national uh, compromise. So you have to deal with a uh, uh, historical process of uh, structuration of a compromise and how it is uh, hit by uh, other dispositives. If you if you are working about education uh, about uh, um, uh, higher education in France, for instance. You deal with a lot of structuration by the state, by the state and after by the uh, specific arrangement, uh, uh, private, public, uh, and so on. Okay? And you have a, a, a something like a macro, uh, a meso regulation at the national sta uh, sta uh, uh, level. Um, and you have a lot of arrangements which are uh, quite um, defined publicly. One of the, one of the questions is uh, uh, what deal with the internationalization of higher education? The comparison with uh, Shanghai, uh, the uh, mode of uh, circulation of students, uh, topic for you. Uh, does it uh, broke the arrangement? Or uh, do the arrangement is broken by the transformation of public organization uh, with uh, l'autonomie des universités, uh, l'autonomie des universités. Uh, so you have to deal with all this uh, transformation. Uh, what uh, what can we uh, 
say about the neoliberalization of uh, university, um, and you have to work to produce the trajectory, to produce the, the, the breaking. So you deal in the same time with the transformation of state, with the transformation very weak for, for instance, of the wage labor nexus, uh, uh, the transformation of the uh, international relation, and so on. So you have to, uh, to wonder in the, in the deeper organization of the, the sector you are working in. OK? Uh, critics, question. If one wants to use uh, so I, I, I say a word about that, uh, uh, discussing about uh, higher education. If you want to work, you have different methodology. You, can do, you cannot deal with everything. Some of the researchers uh, are dealing with uh, the um, long waves, long series, with uh, quantitative. Uh, if you want uh, to read some paper which are really uh, uh, quantitative, you can read the paper of Sandrine Michel. Um, Sandrine Michel or Sandrine Michel and, and Delphine Valade. Their uh, methodology uh, are uh, linked to uh, long term uh, quantitative uh, analysis about uh, the social cost of the human reproduction. So they can uh, deal with uh, education, with uh, health and care, uh, in the spirit of uh, anthropogenetic model, for instance. So uh, they are dealing with uh, creating or utilizing uh, long waves uh, uh, series. OK? Uh, you can work with uh, something which uh, deal much more with a, a sociologist dynamic. Uh, you are going to, uh, to, to understand all the institutions uh, which are important to define uh, the wage labor status, the mode of competition, and it is an inquiry. Um, not really sociologist, but you have to, to go and see and uh, have discussion with uh, uh, leader, worker, etc. And, um, and to define uh, in the same time is there are some regularity on the trend of uh, development, on mode of repartition. You have to deal uh, with um, uh, local, uh, local uh, sectorial uh, statistics. Uh, because you, you can just uh, work uh, about institution. So you have to go deeper and deeper in the, in the subject. Uh, so when you are defining your topic, if you to your topic is like that, uh, you have to be a, a very tough worker to, uh, to deal with all these uh, this, um, data. Okay? But you, you, you produce certain data and you use another data. But I think you have to... Uh, to go and see uh, the grey literature, uh, the, um, the arrangement, and so on. OK? Uh, could you, from the different, li different limitations, um, as you see, one of the major uh, uh, specificity of that, this approach is uh, the complexity, as you say, uh, and the interdependence of uh, uh, the different uh, elements which produce regulation. Uh, work, competition, sometimes money, uh, international relations, um, states, uh, wow. So the difficulty is just uh, wow. Uh, it's too heavy for me. I prefer a good model, hop, 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 uh, uh, a bit of uh, mathematics, and uh, up, it's done. Uh, I'm joking, but uh, the, the limit uh, is uh, that you have to deal with a lot of data and, inter and uh, interdependency. Is uh, uh, certainly one of the intrinsic, uh, intrinsic, I don't know, uh, limits of uh, our approach. Um, I have no response to, the, to this difficulty. Just uh, if you uh, uh, you retry and if you produce a good uh, good paper. It's uh, very useful, much more than uh, some uh, other production you can read in the uh, neoclassical papers. Of course, as you know. Uh, 
So, two. Um, uh, by its use, insulin elements, regulation approach seem to allow for. Uh, uh, so, uh, the prediction, uh, regulation theory um, is not uh, really uh, or fundamentally useful for prediction. Uh, what we can uh, uh, deal with is to deal with all the interdependency, to see the power, the balance of power, the institutional process, and to uh, make a, a very good uh, photography, or better, a movie. Uh, but uh, the way of the future are quite uh, uncertain. So uh, what we can uh, say is, there, are, there, are, there is a trajectory like that. There are another trajectory like this. And uh, it depends on the decision. It depends on the struggle. Do uh, the social worker with, uh, will uh, catch these uh, conflicts to, uh, to fight and to uh, transform the, uh, the, the ordonnance Macron, for instance? Uh, I don't know. Uh, really, I don't know. What I can say is uh, uh, that is prepared like that. It can, it, what I can say is different scenarios, scenarios. Uh, uh, if, you, if you read uh, Robert Boyer, uh, he spent a lot of uh, uh, pages um, to define uh, uh, three scenarios for Europe, four scenarios for China. And he, he said, if uh, this happens, so we have uh, this um, scenario. If that happens, we have that. So we can deal with scenarios. Uh, it's something like a prediction, but it's not really a prediction. And um, so, uh, and the other element uh, uh, of uh, of the answer is um, for me, not for Robert Boyer, Aguilera. For me, uh, I prefer to uh, deal with uh, an excellent, if possible, uh, photography of uh, of the situation, and to deal with the actor. Uh, with uh, syndicates, with uh, firms, with uh, trade unions, oh, sorry, uh, and say, uh, uh, what will you do with that uh, photography? Uh, I have not to. I'm not the expert. I don't want to be uh, to be uh, like Tirol and saying it is not political. It is technical. I know what has to be done, and uh, it is not political. Our point of view is that um, our work uh, are part of a political economy. Um, political economy means that there are political decisions. I do not want to, uh, to, uh, to say that uh, I have the good decision and the other are a stupid person and uh, I know what they have to do. So it is not just uh, a fancy to, uh, not to have some response. I think it's very important for our uh, expertise uh, to uh, enlighten uh, actors uh, to say uh, uh, scenario one, uh, if you do that, it's possible to on scenario two. Uh, okay, but not uh, it's the, the best way. I, I personally, I absolutely refuse uh, that sort of uh, expertise, uh, uh, like um, the, voilà, the, okay. So, it's enough for, uh, for Jean Tirole. Um, OK. Discussing uh, the distinction between macro and microeconomy is one strong critic for post keynesian I'm not sure to understand your question. Uh, so one of the critics, or many critics, from post keynesianism to neoclassical is, for example, the fallacy of composition where... Composition of what? Composition, for example, if you have in the micro level, you have some dynamics, then the, it's not just a simple aggregation for the macro level, but something can change. For example, we have the paradox, paradox of thrift, where uh, a lot of people know that capitalists, they save, uh, in, they can, can save and can be good for growth in the micro level, but macro level, Kaleki said that it's not exactly what happens. So we, we were thinking that maybe the meso could say something about it. Is there a role for the meso to try to, because if we jump from one, from the ma uh, macro to the micro, from to the macro, 
there is this gap. Is the meso filling this gap? Is yeah. The okay. 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 I understand. Um, it's basically yeah. that aggregating the micro yeah. will not lead yeah. to a macro. Yeah. Uh, macro yeah. Anyway, it's not yeah. aggregation yeah. that leads to. Yeah. We are, uh, you're right, uh, we are not dealing with something like an aggregation. Neither aggregation from micro to meso, nor aggregation from meso to macro, as you, as you uh, understood. Um, one element of discussion, not an uh, answer, uh, discussion is that uh, when uh, you are dealing with meso analysis, when you are dealing with an inquiry, when you, you are uh, uh, trying to uh, to catch in the same time, uh, watch about uh, compromise, about work, about competition, uh, about quality. Um, uh, you don't work about aggregation. You, uh, you are uh, catching the institutional device, which are not aggregated, which are working at a level or another level you have to deal with. I don't know if you, if you uh, are uh, in the about uh, uh, job market for uh, for uh, researcher uh, in France, uh, there is an, it's national level. Uh, if you are uh, in Great Britain, the job market is not really not only national. So you have to deal with what you are uh, looking at, and it is re uh, an element of discussion about aggregation. You are working about still is that fact, yes, but still is that fact you. Uh, which are fed by um, institution, uh, social movement, uh, uh, devices, uh, uh, theories uh, about. Uh, so you are not working about aggregation. You you, you deal about the uh, representation of, of a sector of subsector, and you have to define if there is a reality. A looping reality at this level. So no aggregation. So it's a, a, a way to uh, to discuss with the macro representation, which could be a bit um, uh, etéré, uh, out of the reality. Uh, and you, we are in the in the in the in development. We deal with uh, the production work. Uh, which is real. Uh, so uh, it could be qualitative and quantitative. Uh, everything is possible. So uh, it's um, uh, much more thick. Uh, no, it's understandable. OK. So, uh, so fourth, uh, hop, quatrième question. Alors, this uh, master being focused on economic policy, predict, predicting power, so uh, method. Maybe also about the extent of regulations. Ah, si, OK. Um, just a word about that. Uh, wait, um, I think when you, when you are in, um, uh, at the meso level, uh, the trajectory, the scenarios, uh, I don't say, I, I will not say are much, much more predictable, but you are inside uh, a sphere or reality which is uh, uh, delimited. Uh, so the way to, uh, to define the, the scenario, uh, it's much more uh, possible. Uh, so you, you, you can uh, say to the actor, I, I'm working with uh, the, the first uh, um, trade union of uh, research about the uh, education uh, sector. Uh, the discussion is about uh, how can we deal with this or with that, uh, uh, how do uh, neoliberalization of, uh, of higher education deals. And uh, we uh, can see the trajectory. Are we uh, um, uh, uh, strong enough to uh, modify the, uh, it? No, of course. But uh, we have some uh, element to, uh, uh, to, uh, to act, uh, if possible. So it, if, if, if uh, the topic is to uh, have some uh, scenarios, um, the problem of scenarios is about uh, 
your, uh, your way to be optimistic or pessimistic. Uh, it's very, very easy uh, to, uh, to speak about the uh, economic horror. Uh, it will be terrific. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, um, so I would how do you say when you drink to you are true drunk uh, the, to be drunk of pessimism I, I say I, I, I don't know in English how to say that but in French I, I, I uh, usually uh, uh, develop that uh, that perspective with a um, researcher with a much more critic about capitalism and neoliberalism uh, it's a, a mean to be drunk of, uh, of, uh, of pessimism uh, it's very easy uh, after you can be mad, you can be drunk, really, or you can jump uh, from a from a bridge, uh, or so on. But it's not very useful. So it's, what is very difficult is to to have a um, reasonable pessimism, pessimism, uh, and reasonable uh, optimism. And, uh, that uh, it's possible to 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 do something uh, in the. In a, in a situation which uh, it's not very fair for a huge part of the population. So, <laughs> you know I, how I deal with prediction. It's not really easy. And after, uh, ex, ex ante and ex post. What is the, really the question? Um, so, you mentioned in your presentation the uh, ex ante uh, regulation. Um, I will I begin with ex post. Uh, it's easier. Um, ex post, uh, uh, it's a regulationist methodology. Uh, the regulationist methodology is uh, uh, we are dealing with uh, uh, 10, 20, 30, uh, uh, 100 years of uh, uh, long, uh, long, uh, long series. And we are uh, we try to, uh, to, to, to see, to, to catch uh, the regularities, the re irregularities of uh, growth, uh, um, distribution of uh, wage, and so on. So we are uh, uh, working ex post. We are trying to define how have been built uh, the social compromise. Okay. So ex ante. Uh, it's uh, linked to the, uh, the point of about the uh, scenarios or the prediction. Uh, we have to uh, we uh, we are working about what is this, what uh, is uh, um, uh, is dealing now. Uh, what is dealing now about social protection? Uh, what are the strengths? Uh, what are the uh, trajectory of uh, social protection? So ex ante is uh, uh, in fact. Now and not uh, really ex ante, and uh, it's uh, linked to the all the difficulties uh, to define the trajectories. So is that I say when uh, when I when I uh, uh, have in my slide ex ante and ex post. Ex post is much more easy. It's finished. Ex ante is much more interesting because uh, we want to discuss with actors. We want to know uh, uh, what happened tomorrow. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, oh. Some questions or everything is absolutely clear? Oh, path. Hello. Uh, my name is Eric, I'm from Option A. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask um, regarding using uh, meta-analysis um, as a methodology, um, because in your presentation it seems like um, by using the meta-analysis you come up with a very descriptive um, discussion of an economic phenomenon, and I guess is that is that a correct impression that I'm making regarding the meta-analysis? And related to that. Um, if much of the analysis that comes out of using this methodology is descriptive, how, um, what, can, what are your thoughts regarding being able to use that to create meaningful comparative analyses um, in the same level across um, various subjects? And I guess this is related to the um, 
policy capability, so to speak, of such an analysis. Thank you. Tu veux que je prenne plusieurs questions Ok. Thank you. Uh, Victoria, option B. Um, thank you for your presentation. It was very, very interesting. Um, my question is just, since this all was very abstract, right? And I was just really, really quickly wanted to ask if you could give us more examples of how you actually have used this approach so far, um, just to make it more clear. Thank you. Thank you as well for your presentation. My name is Ryan from option B. Um, my question regards the sort of methodology um, quite broadly. And my concern is that a really individualized uh, specific approach might be great from a, a sort of abstract theoretical notion of you know, how the world really is so that we can kind of tailor our theory to every specific sort of uh, reality, every specific uh, society, economy. But at the same time, it could be harder then to rally people behind one story of how reality works. It can also sort of, I guess, lead to fragmentation not only in academia but within, you know, parts of society. So, is it inherently, I guess, a harder story to to sell to people if you have a regulationist approach or historical institutionalist approach that, um, you know, in incorporates the idea that um, everything is so specific? Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, for your presentation. And thanks to the guys. It was also very good to have that after your presentation because we kind of complete the framework. Um, my question is, more on uh, relations between uh, the, the fathers of the regulation in schools and, and you, the, the group of professors that are building the, the meso analysis. Uh, it's more about curiosity maybe if, if they have acknowledged the, the, these new tools you are bringing uh, to the school or if it's more like a confrontation between the, the fathers of the school and you. And also a, a very small question on uh, are you while listening to you, I was thinking of the sociologist uh, Pierre Bourdieu and how, in a way, his method of understanding the, the champs uh, can be seen as, as a meso-analysis. For me, it, yeah. it can, it's linked very much. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yes, of course. You want? Okay. okay. Uh, and the last one. I'm Brenda from Option A. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation, very interesting. Uh, I would like to know, considering these interactions between the meso and the macro analysis, how long run uh, institutional changes are abroad? How long? Um, okay, uh, some, some point to, to, to discuss. Um, so, uh, I think the two first questions have something uh, in common. Uh, about uh, the, um, the way it's um, a bit uh, descriptive um, uh, and the other it's abstract. Oh no, great, you say exactly uh, inverse. Uh, so what we are dealing with, um, we are dealing um, to understand uh, the evolution of capitalism in long, uh, in long period. Uh, wow. Uh, it's an important topic. So uh, we are discussing with our colleagues, with some post canadian with some uh, 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 conventionalists, uh, with some uh, others, um, and we are discussing with uh, the regulations. We are much more in the macro analysis, uh, and their topics is to define the regime. Uh, in the first time, the Fordist regime, and after the financialized regime. So, it's so, so, so you see, there is something like, a, like a, a Greek key to understand uh, the transformation of capitalism. Uh, so, uh, our topic is to, uh, 
to, uh, to feed the analysis with much more description of what is um, at stake uh, in the, the different space, in the different sectors. So we, are, uh, we try to have a description, but um, uh, one of the major problems uh, is, is there in EPOG, you should have 24 hours of regulation theory, not two. Uh, uh, hey, it will be it will be better uh, better for my English. Maybe I, in the end of the courses, I I, I will be uh, more fluent. Um, so it's a, it's a problem. I see it's a huge uh, corpus of uh, of papers of uh, works. So I try to be very uh, abstract uh, and to say, oh, I am not abstract. I, you have to describe. So. Uh, Sometimes I, um, I am like a, a bit of schizophrenic, um, <laughs> but uh, I think it's very common for a, for a researcher. May, uh, so we try to describe, but in an abductive way. So abductive way, it's quite abstract. Uh, the, the great concept, the evolution of a wage labor nexus, form of competition, uh, 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 a framework, uh, an abstract framework, and after with this abstract, we are going to describe uh, what happened in the field, in a champ. If you, uh, the discussion with uh, Pierre Bourdieu is uh, very important for habitus and for champ. Mm -hmm. I don't know uh, if you are saying champ or field, but uh, champ. Uh, so, uh, so an abstract uh, and very um, fan of, uh, of concept. It's a, it's a theory which uh, uh, loves concept, too, maybe too much. Uh, so we have a lot of concept, mode de regulation, uh, regime d'accumulation, uh, and so on. And with those, uh, the, this framework, framework and this concept, we are going uh, to deal with reality. And so, when we are in reality, uh, uh, I deal uh, with education. I have some paper, some, I, I, I describe the process of transformation of higher education, dealing the so, so, uh, with a very concrete uh, development about uh, the institution on education, the, uh, the HERS, the ANR, the uni university, uh, and so on to define the trajectory of uh, the transformation of the mode of, of competition among organizations, um, the transformation between uh, public services, which is quite uh, macro-defined, to uh, uh, service relation, the transformation from uh, public services to uh, service industry. I go uh, deeper in the, uh, the organization, the relation to students, and so on. So there is that struggle. Uh, in another paper, I, wor I work with uh, CSR um, two years ago with uh, corporate social responsibility. Uh, I, uh, instead of uh, speaking about MESO, I spoke about CSR. Uh, so I work on CSR. Uh, how do CSR deals with the organization of capitalism? How do CSR produce some institution? Weak institution, but institution which could be used by NGOs and trade unions to go uh, 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 to confront with a big firm to say, uh, you sign a uh, mani uh, magnificent report on your responsibility, so uh, what do you do now with the uh, children in uh, this country or that country? So we, we deal with um, the concrete organization, uh, and after, after dealing with that, uh, for CSR, for instance, I define what CSR is in political uh, strategy of firms and in the core of economic organization and transformation of uh, global valuation. So uh, we try to deal with some uh, abstraction going to uh, the champ for themselves, uh, including uh, Bourdieuian uh, Dimarche. Uh, Dimarche? You know. um, and going back to uh, the concept, saying uh, uh, how do uh, the, uh, the, the big concepts are, are uh, 
uh, affected by uh, our inquiry. OK? Hi, I, I, you have your answer. Stop. No, I'm, jo I'm joking. <laughs> What Ryan raised earlier, um, you talked about how to deal with these abstractions and realize that, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess the question is that because you make these real realizations localized and specific to a, s a particular circumstance, how can you then use those realizations as um, a source of comparative analyses? So when you're, for example, talking about your education, for, yeah, for yeah, instance, yeah, yeah. how can you say that you know, education in, in France, how does it compare to the one in the US and what's I best never point? say that when I deal with French education, I can speak about everything. <laughs> no, really. Um, it can be very useful to understand what do uh, neoliberalization affect education to discuss with uh, health sector. Uh, it can be very useful to deal with what do um, financial financialization uh, affect uh, professional football to discuss with another process of financialization. Uh, it's uh, uh, based on the specific arrangement at meso level, but what we stress is to, uh, to catch the link, the dialectical link, the process of autonomization and domination and we have frameworks of that uh, dialectical nexus, which could be, uh, I don't know if it's compare, but uh, discuss. So we have a lot of case studies. Uh, you can say that, uh, OK, you have a lot of case studies, but uh, what is the general rules? Uh, I, don't know, I, can, I, can, uh, I can answer. There is some general rules about that uh, dialectical relation. There is some rules about how does um, the macro uh, regime function, not, uh, not uh, uh, generally speaking, but affecting the, re the realities of different sectors. Because when we, when we speak about uh, macroeconomic, macroeconomics, sometimes uh, you are not dealing with um, the, stru the structure social of accumulation. So it's a means to discuss to, uh, to enlighten uh, different process and to discuss with the uh, building of the macro regulation. The macro regulation do not exist in itself out of everything. So we are feeding the, the meso roots of macro regime. Meso roots of macro regimes. Uh, so, tac, tac, tac. Um, I think for the third question, I nearly answer uh, uh, our relation to our father. Uh, every day and every night, I say. Uh, <laughs> no, um, we. I, I, I work uh, uh, very often with Robert Boyer, um, and uh, Robert Boyer is very uh, happy. Then uh, uh, some researcher uh, uh, remain <laughs> regulationist. Uh, despite uh, the difficulty to be regulationist in the mainstream economic uh, uh, organization. As you maybe know, I am uh, one of the vice uh, uh, president of the Association Française d'Economie Politique, so uh, I'm a, a bit uh, involved in the heterodox um, uh, research uh, on movement. Um, so uh, we, we know that it's difficult to be uh, heterodox uh, in France, but <laughs> in other countries, uh, uh, of course. Um, so the discussion is, uh, it wants we, uh, it's uh, very happy of this uh, development of the, uh, the debates, uh, uh, but do not really use our papers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, that's life. Um, um, Chant, of course. I say, uh, long run, uh, long run, uh, long run, long run. So um, different way to, to work on long runs, on uh, long run. Uh, 
some uh, researcher, um, maybe you have uh, Cédric Durand, uh, you work with Cédric Durand, uh, maybe uh, avec, he, he, he works with uh, his, uh, his uh, now uh, Dr. Cain uh, uh, Fourreau, uh, and about uh, long run on the uses of uh, energy. He tried to define, uh, uh, to redefine the, um, the the relation to the nature, uh, or maybe the relation to energy, about, uh, with a long series on the uses of, uh, of energy. So it's a series on, uh, if I remember, uh, 17, 70, 70 years. Um, when uh, Sandrine Michel uh, deal with the uh, reproduction of a uh, human being, is uh, 100, uh, 100, uh, and 50 years. So uh, it depends. Uh, sometimes it's uh, on a three or four periods, but in a lot of uh, papers, uh, it deals with just two periods on the, on the, on the, uh, on the break. Okay? For society? Um, <laughs> so? Um, thank you, first of all. My name is Emmanuel from Option A. I'll be uh, directing my question on the, the global scale in terms of uh, financial instability. Uh, Mesa approach is adopted because the sum of uh, the macroeconomics does not sum up to the global, the real uh, global financial transactions. So what methodology or how do Meso approach will be the utilized in, in solving this problem? OK. Yes, that's the, that's the question. No? See? Oh, but I can't it. So about so about methodology, uh, if there is some uh, isomorphism, um, s in the first time of uh, me meso uh, uh, development, uh, uh, our colleague uh, during the 90s uh, deal with the uh, macro concept, and they try to uh, to define uh, how do this concept. Uh, the, the uh, in the regulation theory, there are three big concepts. Uh, uh, accumulation regime, uh, so growth and accumulation and defining uh, how do we produce productivity and so on. Uh, mode of regulation, the, uh, how do we uh, uh, do the political force uh, 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 guide uh, the accumulation regime. So that's, uh, that's, that's, that's uh, two concepts, uh, so, and there is uh, something we have we call a institutional form. Uh, in institutional form, uh, the definition is uh, the codification of uh, of social nexus, and uh, we define five. So, we love concept. Uh, five uh, institutional form: money, uh, competi uh, competition, uh, state, uh, international, and uh, state. Uh, okay, uh, so we have this this, uh, this uh, structure, and uh, our um, our um, demarche in the first time is to define how can we, we use this framework at the meso level. So we we uh, we have the we, we have made the, the the process of transformation of the concept or adaptation, not as an homology, but. Uh, Using the, um, the the core definition to define how can we deal with uh, wage labor nexus at the um, at the meso uh, at the meso level. So we define uh, another concept which are uh, meso concept uh, which are not really the same, but which have been uh, built by uh, 
an homology with the macro, uh, the macro level. And after, uh, after that uh, first uh, step of uh, meso, uh, uh, meso works, uh, we uh, took some uh, liberties. S took some liberties uh, to mean uh, we feel more free to, uh, to recompose, uh, redefine those concepts to be more, much more um, adaptative to uh, what happened at the meso level. So there, there are some links, but not some uh, very uh, strong and uh, coercitive uh, or uh, um, uh, links. OK? Last one? OK. Au revoir. Merci à vous.